All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about a lot of the common values that we're going to see for t and the terminal points associated with those values. Now, I'm going to go ahead and derive this first one, and then I'll just go ahead and give you um, kind of a list of the common values after that. So first, I want to look at this line. This is, this is the line, should all be familiar with this line, passing through the origin that has the same x value as it does y value, right? This is the line y equals x. Now I want to make some observations here. Uh, if this is the line y equals x, notice that it's going to bisect this first quadrant exactly in half. So I know that from our previous video that if I went from my initial point all the way to the top of this y-axis here, that would be pi over 2 measurement in t, right? So I'm only going to go halfway there. Right? I'm going to go halfway to that top. I'm going to go to this point right here. This has a t of pi over 4, doesn't it? In other words, I'm going 1 eighth of the way around the entire circle, and 1 eighth of pi over 2 is going to be pi over 4. So if y equals x and t equals pi over 4, we're going to find out here um, using a system of equation, what my terminal point is for t equals pi over 4, right? This one's not obvious like the ones we've been doing so far that have been on the x or y axis. So I'm going to do this using my uh, equation for my unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And I want to look for the intersection of my unit circle and this line y equals x. All right, so this is a little bit of review. Remember when we have multiple equations or we're looking at an intersection of two equations, this is called a system of equations. Now there are several ways to solve it, um, but the most direct way in this case is going to be the substitution method. Okay, and you can go back and review this if, if this is all um, Latin to you. But what I'm basically going to do is I know that y equals x, so I'm going to plug in x up here for my y value. So this system of equations gives me the single equation after substitution of x squared plus x squared equals 1. Now any solution of this equation is going to give me an intersection between the two equations. So x squared plus x squared equals 1. That's the same as 2x squared equals 1. That's the same as x squared equals 1 half. Now again, I'm taking the square root of both sides, so remember that I need to have that plus or minus on the right. So I'm going to have x equals plus or minus, and then the square root of 1 half, uh, uh, remember I can just take the square root of the top and the bottom separately, so that's going to be the square root of 1 on the top, which is just 1, over the square root of 2 on the bottom. Let's go ahead and practice rationalizing that denominator. That's going to be the same as plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. All right, so now we have it, right? I know that x is plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, and I know that y equals x. And remember from our quadrants, I know that here in quadrant 1, both x and y are positive. So if this is my p, that's going to give me a p of positive square root of 2 over 2, positive square root of 2 over 2. And we've just found out now what my terminal point p is for a t equals pi over 4. Now this is a pretty easy one to do because this y over x is a nice line. But before we move on and I give you that table of the common terminal points that I promised you, um, I want to make one more observation. I did have a negative solution down here, didn't I? So it's possible for this to be negative. Now what would that be? Well, that would be this point down here, wouldn't it? Let's call this point q. So if I looked at this solution down here, this is the other solution to the system of equations, right? This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is also an intersection of the line y equals x and my unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1, isn't it? Now in this case, q is in quadrant 3, so that means that both my x and y are negative, which I knew because y equals x, doesn't it? So they either have to both be positive or both be negative. So my q down in the bottom left there would be negative root 2 over 2. Negative root 2 over 2. All right. So we've solved this out. When t equals pi over 4, my terminal point is root 2 over 2 
root 2 over 2. Now let's go ahead and document this, and I'm going to go ahead and document down uh, a lot of these common values for you. Now this is uh, commonly found as a table in any pre-calculus book, and you should be very familiar with these values that I'm about to put down here. These are going to be extremely useful uh, for anybody working with this material or trigonometry in general. So I'm going to look at my possible values of t here, and I want to look at my point p, x, y. This is my terminal point associated with these values of t. Now I'll start with an easy one. We know that when t equals 0, that just gives me my initial point, right? We know my initial point here is the point x equals 1, y equals 0. When t equals pi over 6, right? So this is pi over 6 is about right here. I'm going to have a x value of square root of 3 over 2. And we didn't derive this one yet, but um, you can see this in your book or uh, if you're in one of my classes. This is an exercise in this section. The next value, this is the one that we just derived out. This is when my t equals pi over 4. When t equals pi over 4, we just found that we have an x value of square root of 2 over 2 and a y value of square root of 2 over 2. When t equals pi over 3, that's about right here. All right, pi over 3, that means one third of the way across uh, just the top half of my unit circle, right? Because my circumference is 2 pi. This is going to be the flipped values of pi over 6. That's going to be 1 half in my x value and square root of 3 over 2 in my y value. And this will become more clear why this is here, but notice that pi over 6 is the same distance from this x-axis as pi over 3 is from the y-axis. If I add pi over 6 to pi over 3, I get pi over 2, which is my y-axis right here. So there's a symmetry going on here, isn't there? And then this last value, to finish out this symmetry, if I have pi over 2, I know that that gives me an x value of 0 and a y value of 1. Now before we finish up this video, I want to give you guys a little trick here um, that a lot of people use and, and it's quite handy. Notice that I can kind of generalize this order. If I start from 0 and then go incrementally up pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, my x coordinates kind of follow this pattern. You notice I can write 1 as the square root of 4 over 2. You might say, well, why would I do that? Well, uh, it just kind of fits this pattern. But square root of 4 over 2, that's the same thing as 2 over 2, which is the same as 1. Right? So if I stay in my order, the next is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Then I have the square root of 2 over 2. 1 half can be written as the square root of 1 over 2. And of course, 0 can be written as the square root of 0 over 2. Right? So this pattern for my x values, as t increases from 0 to pi over 2 in these key values of t, my x value, all that I'm doing is decreasing from 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So you can just remember this kind of general format um, to start out with, and then just decrease those values in the square root. Now the y value follows a similar pattern. If you notice here, on, I'm going 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, etc. I'm going to exactly the opposite order for y, aren't I? I'm ending with 1 and I'm starting with 0, and I'm going in the exact opposite order. So I can write my y values as square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, which is the same as 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3, over 2 and square root of 4 over 2 which of course as we just discussed is the same thing as 1. So this is a little trick you can remember if this helps you or if you're okay just remembering these as they are um, this is fine too and once we get into triangles I'll have even more tricks to help you to remember these values. Alright that finishes up for this video. Uh, in the next video we're going to introduce reference numbers. This is going to be something that's going to let us use these, um, these five points um, to be able to find the, the terminal point of any value of t around the circle 
that has a denominator the same as these. And it'll become more clear in the next video. We'll see you there.